Hey friends, welcome. Today we are going to discuss Fermi Dirac statistics, and Fermi Dirac statistics is followed by the particles having half integral spin. So we have particles like we have protons, then we have electrons, then we have uh, helium, that is three, and as well as nitrous oxide so these are some of the examples of particles and molecules which have half integral spin and these particles they obey fermi dirac statistics and hence they are known as fermions they are known as fermions now in case of bose einstein statistics uh, we have considered that the particles were indistinguishable but those particles or no restriction were kept or no restriction were put on filling of those particles but in case of fermi dirac statistics we will consider that the particles are indistinguishable and only a single particle can occupy a single energy level that means particles are following Pauli's exclusion principle that is in every energy level there is only a particle having a half spin now suppose uh, we are considering again over here that we are having ni number of particles and these particles are to be filled in ei energy level whose degeneracy is gi or in each ei state there will be or in each ei energy level there will be gi states so and also we know that the particles are identical or the particles are indistinguishable and they will occupy only a single energy level means they will occupy a single energy state so suppose if we consider that uh, we have e0 e1 e2 and up to ei energy levels whose states are say g0 g1 g2 up to gi states and uh, the particles or suppose particles n0 n1 n2 and up to ni particles are occupying the energy levels and only one particle will occupy a single energy level that means okay, suppose if we are having say four or five states so only a single particle or and if i am having two particles then two particles may be in individual states uh, the particles cannot come in a single state so individual in a single state only one particle will be there okay according to Pauli's principle so the permutation or the combination of this type of arrangement can be given by we are having total gi amount of states so it will be given by gi factorial divided by we are totally we are having ni number of particles so divided by ni factorial into we will have gi minus ni factorial so this gi minus ni it gives us the amount of empty space and that empty space has also to be permuted or that um, per combination or permutation of that empty state can be uh, should also be considered so as example i have given that suppose we are having five states and in five states we have to put two particles so we will have five factorial divided by two factorial into the empty space spaces needs to also need also needs to be permuted so we have 5 minus 2 so it will be 3 factorial so in this way we can arrange ni particles into gi different states and this is the permutation combination or permutation by which we can do this okay so again now the thermodynamic probability also this i have written it for generalized i state so for say e0 energy level or for g0 i can write g0 n0 g0 minus n0 factorial similarly for n1 n2 n3 to ni can be written so the thermodynamic probability w i can write it as for first state g0 factorial upon 
एन जीरो फैक्टोरियल इन टू जी जीरो माइनस एन जीरो फैक्टोरियल देन आई विल हैव इन टू जी वन फैक्टोरियल अपॉन एन वन फैक्टोरियल इन टू जी वन माइनस एन वन फैक्टोरियल एंड अप टू आई विल हैव जी आई फैक्टोरियल अपॉन एन आई फैक्टोरियल इन टू जी आई माइनस एन आई फैक्टोरियल सो दिस इज हाउ द प्रॉबिलिटी और दिस हाउ द थर्मोडाइनमिक प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज रिटर्न अगेन एज वी नो दैट फॉर मल्टीप्लीकेशन और वी नो दैट फॉर मल्टीप्लीकेशन वी राइट इट बाई यूजिंग एज कैपिटल बाई सो कैपिटल बाई आई कैन राइट इट एज जी आई फैक्टोरियल अपॉन एन आई फैक्टोरियल इन टू जी आई माइनस एन आई फैक्टोरियल एंड दैट विल बी इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू दैट इज अवर थर्मोडाइनमिक प्रोबेबिलिटी नाउ अगेन वॉट वी नीड इज वी नीड टू फाइंड आउट द मोस्ट प्रोबेबल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड इन ऑर्डर टू सॉल्व द मोस्ट प्रोबेबल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एज वी हैव डन इन मैक्सिमल बोल्समैन डेरीवेशन एज वेल एज बोस आइंस्टाइन स्टेटिस्टिक्स वॉट वील डू इज वी विल टेक लॉन ऑन बोथ हैंड साइड एज द सोल्यूशन ऑफ लॉन इज मच सिंपलियर सो वी विल टेक लॉन इन ऑर्डर टू सिंप्लीफाई द मैथमेटिकल पार्ट एंड हैंस वी विल टेक लॉन ऑन बोथ हैंड साइड्स एंड वेन वी टेक लॉन ऑन बोथ हैंड साइड्स द पाई इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू समेशन सो वी विल हैव एल एन ऑफ डब्ल्यू दैट विल बी इक्वल टू आई कैन राइट समेशन इन टू एल एन जी आई फैक्टोरियल दिस विल बी माइनस बिकॉज डिविजन इज अ माइनस फंक्शन सो वी विल हैव एल एन एन आई फैक्टोरियल माइनस एल एन जी आई माइनस एन आई फैक्टोरियल ओके नाउ अगेन वॉट वी नीड टू डू इज वी विल अप्लाई स्टर्लिंग्स अप्रोक्सीमेशन टू ऑल द थ्री टर्म्स एंड वी नो स्टर्लिंग्स अप्रोक्सीमेशन That is, if we have ln of x factorial, then we can write x ln x minus x. So this is our Stirling's approximation, and we will apply Stirling's approximation to all the three terms. So we can write ln w is equal to summation bracket ln g i can be written as g i ln g i minus g i. माइनस एन आई एल एन एन आई माइनस माइनस प्लस एन आई एंड देन वी विल हैव माइनस जी आई माइनस एन आई एल एन जी आई माइनस एन आई इट विल बी माइनस माइनस प्लस वी विल हैव जी आई माइनस एन आई ओके सो We will have minus n i minus n i will be cancelled out. Plus g i minus g i will be cancelled out, and hence we will have summation bracket g i l n g i minus n i l n n i minus g i minus n i into l n of g i minus and i and then bracket close so this is our term so now we have this term and now we know that for most probable distribution the value of w that is thermodynamic probability is constant and if we differentiate that then this term will be zero and hence whole equation will be equal to zero because as we know that for most probable distribution there is only one single state okay for most probable distribution or the for most probable distribution value of w is constant and hence dl and w that is dl and w it will be equal to zero and hence we need to differentiate this equation also so when we differentiate this equation i can write d now over here gi is a constant term okay so this term will be zero because differentiation of constant is zero so i will not write this term i can write this so again we have minus so i will write minus we will differentiate it by part so ni i will keep constant differentiation of ln ni is 1 upon ni into dni then 
it will be again minus uh, ln ni will keep as it is and differentiation of ni will be dni ln ni again minus i will keep this constant so i have gi minus ni and differentiation of ln of gi upon ni will be 1 upon gi minus ni and again differentiation of ni will be minus dni again minus then this will be constant and this will be minus minus plus so it will be plus dni ln gi minus ni and that will be equal to 0 now again over here this minus ni ni will be cancelled out we have minus dni both these terms will be cancelled out this will be minus minus plus dni so plus dni minus dni will be cancelled out and hence we will have uh, therefore we will have summation uh, i can write ln gi minus ni this is a minus so i can write it as division divided by ni into dni and that is equal to zero further uh, i can also write summation ln i can write gi upon ni minus sorry minus it will be one into dni and that is equal to zero so this is our most or this is our condition for most probable distribution now again we all know that okay we are considering that our system has constant number of particles as well as the energy of the system is constant so the as the particles are constant then summation dni it will be equal to zero okay because if we take or uh, so because because if we take say five particles from energy level one then that five particles i have to put anywhere in any energy level say i will put two energy level two particles in energy level five three particles in energy level six so i am taking five particles substituting any other way so the net sum or the net change in the number of particles is zero but the in if we see the individual change of number of particles in individual energy levels then it will be a definite number okay so the total change is always equal to zero and again the total change in energy that is summation ei dni and that is also equal to zero so the total change in the number of particle is equal to zero and the total change in the energy is also equal to zero now again we will apply lagrange's method of undetermined multiplier suppose this is our equation one this is our equation two and this is our equation three so we will multiply equation two with alpha equation three with beta and we will add both this equation and subtract it from the above equation so uh, we will apply lagrange's method of undetermined multiplier and what we will do is uh, we will subtract equation number two we will add equation number two plus add equation number three and the result will be equal to zero so uh, doing that we will have uh, we can write alpha summation dni plus beta summation ei dni minus we'll have summation ln gi upon ni minus 1 into dni and that is equal to 0 we will take summation one side dni on other side and uh, hence uh, we are left with we will write summation alpha plus beta ei minus ln of gi upon ni minus 1 into dni and that is equal to 0 okay now over here as i have told earlier that the change in the number of particles for an individual state that is suppose if we write dn1 
dn2 dn3 this individual states they are independent of each other that means that the change in dn1 if we take it is a finite number dn2 it is a finite number okay suppose for example i am taking five particles from here and i am substituting two particles here and three particles here so over here in this state or in energy level even there will be five particles less okay so it is a finite term in energy level 2 there will be two particles more and three three particles more so if we see independently the number of energy if we see independently the number of energy levels then the change in the number of particles is a finite term and hence independently dni is not equal to zero so independently dni is not equal to zero but the sum that is if we take the sum that is five minus five and plus five so the, the total will be equal to zero so the sum is always equal to zero but the independently the total number of particles is not equal to zero and hence this term cannot be equal to zero so in order to make this particular equation equal to zero the terms which are in the bracket should be equal to zero so what we will do is we will equate the terms in the bracket should be it should be equal to zero and hence if it is equal to zero then and then only this equation will be equal to zero or else it is not possible so the terms which are in the bracket should be compulsory be equal to zero and hence we can write alpha plus beta ei minus ln gi upon ni minus one and that is equal to zero now what we will do is we will just rearrange this equation we will take ln on right hand side and then what we will do is we will remove ln and we will take anti log and that anti log will be e to the power this value okay so we will have gi upon ni is equal sorry gi upon ni minus 1 is equal to e raised to we can say alpha plus beta ti and further we want this minus 1 can go on right hand side and we want ni upon gi so we can write it, this equation will be 1 upon so i can write ni upon gi will be equal to 1 upon e raised to alpha plus beta ei plus 1 and this relation is known as our fermi dirac statistics one more term or one more rearrangement we can make gi can go on that side and hence we have ni is equal to gi upon e raised to alpha into e raised to beta ei plus one so uh, this equation is our final equation for the fermi dirac statistics and this relation gives the distribution of ni number of particles into gi energy levels and all the particles which are following fermi dirac statistics they are known as fermions hope the topic is clear thank you very much